13 News. Welcome back. After a surge of female political candidates back in 1992, it was labeled the year of the woman. Now, 26 years later, another wave of women could be heading to Washington. And that includes some right out of West Virginia. 13 News reporter Adrienne Robbins has that story. You know, this is just the beginning of the movement. Support my mother. Support my best friend. I mean this in the bottom of my long past time. 2018 is being called the year of the woman 2.0. And that flood of female empowerment has reached politics. I encourage more women to get involved in politics. It's, it's great. I'd love to see more of it. It's definitely a boys club. There's no doubt about it in the U.S. Senate. West Virginia may be known for their mountain mamas. And with your help, I'm the one. But not on Capitol Hill, where in the 155 year history, only two women have represented West Virginia in Congress. The most recent, Senator Shelley Moore Capito. And the pushback was, you know, your kids aren't grown yet. And because I went from basically being a stay at home mom to being an office holder. But my, how things have changed. Now it's uh, young women. We, when I was there, Kathy McMorris Rogers had three babies while she was serving. That was oh, such a such a new thing. But it's now it's it's just reflective of more women in the workforce. The female wave has reached the mountain state. I can tell you from the time I was in 2000, when I was first in the uh, House of Representatives, there were 58 women. Now there's well over 110. So numbers are growing across the nation. They should grow here. This election day, voters will have the choice of a woman candidate in each of the three congressional districts here in West Virginia. It doesn't surprise me at all. I've, I've served with wonderful women. In the past, candidates were forced to overcome being female. These West Virginia women are embracing it. I keep saying, you know, women, we're not magical unicorns. I don't think we're going to fix everything necessarily, you know, perfectly, but I think you know, having more women is a better reflection of the communities that we all live in. But getting to D.C. is only half the battle. My voice maybe hasn't been as loud as I would want it to be or maybe even as respected as I would want it to be, but I don't focus on that. I try to focus on the positive. Uh, I'm one of 100. My voice, my vote counts just as much as um, Chuck Schumer or Mitch McConnell. History could be made on Election Day with women across the nation taking office. But but when it comes to the women on West Virginia's ticket, they're more concerned with health care. Especially for the 800,000 West Virginians with a pre-existing condition. This is real lives are on the line. Jobs. Our economy has made a turnaround that has affected everybody's pocketbook. And the opioid epidemic. We need to fight this drug addiction as though it's the most important thing that's ever we've ever experienced because I think it is. As for the future leaders, Senator Capito runs a program called West Virginia Girls Rise Up, where she teaches young girls the skills to one day run for office or do anything that they set their mind to. I'm hoping that uh, someday somebody's going to come up to my daughter and say, you know, your mom came to my class when I was in fifth grade and, and now I'm running for president or, you know, because she, she showed me that you can do this.